Pokemon, the highest grossing media franchise of all time. These pocket monsters are cute characters with animal characteristics. But can you imagine a Pokemon with fully human features? Let's start with making the head. First, start out with a ball of clay. Then draw two lines to make sure the eyes, nose and mouth are in the right position. You don't want the face to look like this. Cut the clay like a diamond to make the desired face shape. Shut up. The face has a natural depression at the eyes. Make sure to create a slight dent. Just like the dent in my wallet after making this. Add some clay and carefully sculpt the forehead and nose. Then carve out the eyes and make sure that the camera is not in focus while you are doing this. Carve out a hole for the mouth as well. Eyelashes are usually drawn with paint, but sculpting them adds more dimension to the face. Then proceed to sculpt the pupils as well as the eyebrows. After some fine tuning, it's starting to look more like a human face. I pretend to flex my arm strength by drilling a hole using a pin vis. I give up. The head is 2.5 cm and I want the body to be 6 times of that, which is 15 cm. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. Start making the body with the skeleton first and make sure that the length of the body and the limbs are correct. I'm trying out a different method of making the wire armature today. Then, wrap around the wire with clay and heap on more clay until your desired body size. Gardevoir has a very thin body, so not much clay is required. Now that the general body shape is there, it's time to start on the anatomy. Carve out two lines and smooth the clay to accentuate the hips. It should be quite clear by now that we are going for a female character. This makes perfect sense since there is no question that Gardevoir's design totally looks like a girl in a flowing white dress. However, the game data tells a different story. Bruh. I'm still going to sculpt a female character as I did a male one previously. Continue to shift the clay around, ensuring that the body has a nice S shape. Add curves to the upper back for the rib cage. Do the same for the back side and midline of the body. Going back to the front, work on the collarbone as well as the muscles near the neck. The upper body seems too thin, so more clay is added. Add two balls of clay and smooth them out at the chest area. I know what you are thinking. Yes, the sun is very bright today. After baking the body in the scorching sunlight, start working on the legs. While doing research for this video, I chanced upon this treasure trove of Pokemon fan art called Pokemon Gijinka. Fans of the franchise who have nothing better to do are so creative regularly post their own versions of Gijinka, ranging from cute ones to cool ones like this Rayquaza Gijinka. My creative juices started flowing and I finally decided on making a sculpture of Gardevoir in a human form. I'm always looking for new ways to do things so for the right leg, I call this the hot dog method. Imagine that you are preparing sausage skewers to barbecue for your friends. You do it until you realize your friends only exist in your dreams. Just like life, things don't always go the way we plan. Sticking the wire through the clay squashed the clay unevenly and made it extra hard to get an even surface. A firm grip on the tool is crucial for fine detailing. Once the legs are baked in the oven, let's move on to the arms. In hindsight, the hands should have been made after the clothes as they kept getting in the way. 
For arms, the most important thing is the elbow. Without it, the arm will look like a stick. For the hands, let's stick to the most comfortable method for now. I will try another method in future. Let's move on to the clothes. Start off with the upper body, making a C cut on a thin sheet of clay. I initially wanted to smooth out the clay below the chest, but the creases look really interesting, so I decided to keep it. After that, a thin piece of clay is added to both shoulders to make a clear distinction between the skin and the clothes. While doing the clothes, I didn't have anything in mind and I just went along with whatever I wanted. But it's starting to look kind of like a peasant dress. <laughs> peasant. Repeat the same process for the other side and start working on the back. Gardevoir has a horn piercing through its body, which I somehow only noticed recently. Apparently, the horn is a physical manifestation of its heart and allows Gardevoir to be able to sense emotions. I decided to make the back part of the horn only, as having the horn stick through the boobs is a... Um, <clears throat> It's time to make the dress. I wasn't happy with the first one I made and secondly, it would be hard to paint the legs after putting the dress on. So, I tore off the first dress and painted the skin first. Paint the face too as it might be difficult to paint the skin under the hair later. For the eyes, I painted the pupils red and then a dark red on top of it. Add the light reflection to give life to the eyes. For the hair, following the original art exactly will look too boyish, so just go for something close enough. We'll come back to the back of the head later. The right leg is still not smooth enough, so use some fine grit sandpaper to remove the bumps. The thumb got amputated in the process somewhere, so we'll have to patch it up with another one. I squash the ball of clay to get a perfectly round sheet, which can then be cut to size to make a perfect inner dress for Gardevoir. Add some dynamic by adjusting the flow of the cloth, imagining how it would react to a westward wind. Add some folds in the middle area because clothes look like that when worn. I made some shoes, nothing fancy, but they look comfortable to wear at least. Going back to the head, I made a hair accessory to mimic the spiky looking things on Gardevoir's head. For the back of the head, cut a ball into half. Cut a variety of hair that look like pasta strands. Attach to the head and smooth them out. For the outer garment, the initial plan was to make a white dress over the inner one, but the hands are too close to the green dress. So I decided to make a split dress, or whatever you call it, by cutting four trapeziums and attaching them to the waist area. Create an illusion of wind blowing the outer garment in the same direction as the green dress. And to hold the garment in position while baking the clay, some aluminum wire are used. The white garment looks a little weird by itself, so I decided to add a belt. The belt buckle frame is made by bending some tin aluminum. After cutting out the belt and putting a few holes into it, I did the seemingly easy task of putting on the belt buckle. Finally. Then put on the belt prong and finish up the painting. Coat the chest area and the horn with a nice shade of red, being careful not to get paint on my hands. It failed. Paint the hair and shoes as well. For the base, take a decently sized fiber board and drill two holes into it to attach to the legs. Cut thick grass to size and glue it on with some goop. 
The glue takes 24 hours to cure, so I came back a day later to finally give Gardevoir some Pokemon grass to stay in. Until her destined Pokemon trainer comes to catch her. This has been a month of effort and overall, I'm very happy with the way she turned out. This is clay to treasure and I'll be back with a better video.